Following the July 14, 2015 flyby of Pluto by the New Horizons spacecraft, it will continue to send back images for some time. Here are some first impressions about what we are seeing. The most noticeable feature of Pluto is a large impact crater that exposed a lighter material under a darker surface material. The lighter material is probably ice that melted during the impact and refroze as it filled the crater. The other thing to know is that despite this large crater, Pluto's surface seems to have relatively few craters. This means that its surface is younger than most of the cratering in the solar system, suggesting recent geologic activity. Geologic activity on such a small, cold world would be more consistent with a young Pluto that is thousands of years old rather than billions. This high resolution picture shows mountains that are most likely water ice and their presence in the absence of craters supports the possibility of ongoing geologic activity. The presence of these water ice mountains would suggest that Pluto is warm enough inside to have liquid water that freezes at the surface. If this is the case, the presence of these mountains is consistent with a young Pluto rather than an old one. It will take examining more data to confirm this, but it is a good start. Like Pluto itself, Charon has relatively few craters, and a single large one. This too suggests the possibility of current geologic activity in a young world. Thus, both Pluto and Charon are consistent with youth rather than being billions of years old. One possibility why these worlds could still be geologically active is heat produced by the period of accelerated nuclear decay indicated to have occurred 4,000 to 8,000 years ago by the Ray Project. In any event, the low cratering of Pluto and Charon are consistent with recent and possibly current geologic activity. So Pluto and its moons are turning out to be an amazing place.